what if I told you that this simple radar sensor holds the secret to understanding every complex radar system? By the end of this video, you will spot three critical components in any radar, from military jets to self-driving cars. The first component is the radar chip. This specialized chip creates microwaves and captures their echoes, producing raw difference signal that contains both speed and distance information. The technical term for this signal is either mixer output or down converted signal. In this case, the radar chip includes an integrated microwave mixer that produces this different signal. The second component is the radar antennas. These special antennas do two jobs. First, they send out the radar beam to light up objects with microwave radiation. Then they collect all the echoes that bounce back, like a microphone picking up multiple voices at once. Think of the radar beam like a flashlight. It lights up everything in its path, and the echoes from all objects blend together in the received signal. The radar chip then extracts the difference between transmitted and received signals. And the third component is a digital signal processing chip that analyzes the different signal from the radar chip to calculate how far objects and how fast they are moving. Let's look one more time. The microwaves from the radar chip are radiated through a transmit antenna and reflect off objects. Then received echoes used to produce a different signal, which is routed to the opposite side of the PCB, amplified and fed into a DSP processor. Using fast Fourier transform, the processor extracts difference and speed values, then outputs the results digitally through a data connector. The flashlight analogy helps us visualize how an invisible radar beam and its reflection meet loop, but it doesn't explain how speed and distance are measured. The flashlight represents the transmitting antenna. What would be the analogy for the receiving part? I know how strange it may sound, but the best analogy for the receiving part is a single pixel camera or a light intensity sensor. But here is the puzzle. How can we measure the speeds and distance to multiple objects using only a single pixel? The answer is in two key differences between the radar and the flashlight. The first key difference is that the radar waves are coherent. We can measure the phase information at every point in space. In contrast, the flashlight photons have random phases. If you could visualize the microwave phase as a repeating red-blue color pattern, you would immediately see how to measure the distance with it, just like using a ruler. The second key difference is that the radar uses a single pure frequency or controlled frequency sweeps, unlike the broad white light spectrum of a flashlight. Because the radar's wavelength is precisely known, phase measurements can be used like a precision ruler to measure speed and distance. Let's visualize the radar beam originating from the antenna's phase center. With just four elements, this patch array produces nearly circular wavefronts, behaving like a directional point source. We can visualize electromagnetic distribution using sinusoidal waveforms. This makes the color meaning perfectly clear. Red indicates maximum positive amplitude, while blue shows the minimum negative amplitude in the field distribution. We use color to represent electromagnetic wave phase. The color shows periodic variation as phase repeats in 360 degrees 
cycles. To analyze reflection, we track phase changes along the direct path from the antenna's phase center to the reflecting object surface. For clarity, let's apply the same repeating colors pattern to the sinusoid itself. As before, positive red part above the axis, negative blue part below. Some microwaves reflect of the objects and return to the receiving antenna. Now let's visualize with color strips the transmitting antenna illuminates the target like a flashlight, while the part of the reflected radiation reaches our receiving antenna, functioning as a one pixel camera. Let's examine a specific moment when the transmitted wave phase is 100 degrees. After multiple phase wraparounds, it reaches the vehicle surface at 170 degrees. Following microwave theory, the wave then undergoes an additional 100 degrees shift during reflection, before returning to the receiving antenna with the final phase of 80 degrees. With the stationary target, the phase difference stays constant, because the distance to the radar never changes. The transmit antenna's instantaneous wave phase doesn't affect this. Here is how it works. The radar transmits a signal. When the target isn't moving, the radar receives a reflected signal at the same frequency, but with constant phase shift. Inside the radar chips, we now have two nearly identical signals, the original transmission and its delayed echo. In reality, the reflected signal is much weaker because of both propagation losses and partial reflection. The simplest radar transceiver chip works with two sinusoidal signals, one generated internally and another from reflected objects. These signals enter a microwave down conversion mixer, an on-chip circuit that converts two high-frequency inputs into a single low-frequency difference output. The mixer needs only a small portion of the transmitted signal, the rest is radiated through the transmitting antenna. Let's understand the Doppler effect in a simple way and see how it helps measure speed. This explanation isn't exactly how microwaves work, but it uses easier concepts that are simpler to follow. As you remember, there are two signals in the radar, the transmitted signal and the received signal. Now let's see what happens when we combine them. When the two signals are in phase, their combined waveform reaches maximum amplitude. But if the vehicle moves just a little bit by a quarter wavelength, the signals become perfectly out of phase and cancel each other. Now, if vehicle continues to move, the amplitude variation of the combined waveform will be exactly at the Doppler frequency. It's easy to check using formulas to see if the movement of the vehicle can be converted to the Doppler frequency.